Okay, so Jonathan Reeves here with another VetWorks 2021 video. Nice to see you all again. And before we get started in the video, I just really wanted to highlight the new VetWorks Virtual Design Day that's coming up on October the 6th, so Tuesday, uh, not too far away. Now, if you haven't already registered, there's still plenty of time to get registered. It's a virtual event this year for obvious reasons. It's going to be three different airings at different times all over the world, so it doesn't matter where you are, if you're in the UK, um, or it looks like it's going to be about nine o'clock in the morning um, and so on. So definitely get registered for the event. There's some really cool speakers coming up, um, some from America. Um, one of my great clients actually from the UK, Nick Lawrence from AQ Partnership. It's going to make a really great presentation, I know. So some really nice uh, talks and presentations. I'm sure you'll learn a lot as well as you know, finding out all about the new 2021 features. So all you need to do is click sign me up. Um, and that will take you through to the registration page. Um, if you can't find that, just Google Planet Vet to Works and that will take you through to the first page. Off you go, sign up to the page and let's look forward to all getting together on October the 6th. I look forward to joining you then. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Vectorworks 2020 new features video by me, Jonathan Reeves. Now today we're going to look at um, some information on documentation. In particular, we're going to be looking at the new smart markers tools and how these work to actually help you kind of create your documentation process for your building. So I've actually got a project at the moment that I'm doing some uh, regulations drawings on at the moment. Um, it's for a little simple bungalow extension, um, two story actually here. And you can see the way I've actually constructed the model, I'll just really strip away some of the layers here, is basically using layers. Okay, so I'm not using stories or anything too fancy for this particular project. You can see I've got a first floor layer, let's strip the roof away, let's take the first floor away. Um, and so on. You can see I've actually also modelled some of the roof structure using the um, wonderful framing member tools. Uh, so all of these are actually kind of roof rafters and framing members as well. I like to do that because I find that really helpful in terms of sort of visualising the structure and also sort of, you know, I think the engineer finds that pretty helpful um, in terms of sort of sizing up the, the beams and so on. Okay, so what I'm going to do to begin with, I'm just going to pop to my top plan view. And I just really want to kind of show you how this works. Let's sort of start from scratch, as it were. Um, in fact, I've actually got a, an existing section here. Um, but what I'll do, I'll create a new class for this. Let's put this in section lines. And let's just right click and spell that properly, hopefully. Yep, good little tip. And then um, let's pop that in the class. I'll click seven for my visibility tool. And I'm actually just going to zap that class to turn it off. Just so you can see we're starting from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of put a, a, a box around the area that we're interested in mainly for this particular sheet. And then we're going to go view, create viewport. And we're going to use this uh, crop to basically crop the viewport. And I'm going to go and create a brand new sheet layer here. Okay, so let's give this a drawing number 100. Let's just call this plan. And we don't need to edit properties after creation. Let's just click OK and let's see how that sits on the drawing. Good, okay, so the first thing I might want to do is kind of blow this up a little bit, so that's fine, up to one to 50 scale. No, none of this is new, you will have done this before. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down to our smart markers. Okay, so maybe I'll just drag this palette into the drawing, just so you can kind of see what we're doing a little bit more clearly. Um, and for those of you who are quite new to VetWords, this is a really nice feature. Um, with all the palettes, you can actually drag and undock them and I really like the way you can view them as icons. You know, once you get to, to know what everything is, icons is probably the best way to look at the software. Or icons and text, certainly when you're learning. Okay, good. So we're going to go for a detail callout. So this is one of the nice new features here. So let's say that we're interested in um, a little bit of construction around this kind of corner here. I can kind of click onto the callout tool and immediately drag that into the drawing. Now you'll notice that up on the top bar, there's a range of different options here. Let's just sort of show you a few of these. It's got a circular one, got a traditional rectangle one. I actually really like using the rounded rectangle personally. Um, so let's just undo those two. And let's just use another rounded rectangle on maybe this little detail here. Okay, good. So I've got the detail, but I haven't actually yet specified a viewport. So we'll do that in a second. I just really want to show you the really nice feature here with the 
the actual marker position itself. And um, it's really cool, you know, you can drag it around to any position and it kind of auto relocates as well. So that's nice. And if I click on that point there, you'll see that I can kind of move that around as well. Let's just show you how that works again on this one. Really, really nice job. You kind of get it into a nice sort of readable, sensible fashion. Good, okay, so when we're ready, we can click onto the viewport on this little um, red chain icon. You may have seen this with section viewports in earlier versions of Actworks. This essentially means it's not linked yet. So to link it, we just simply go up to the object information panel and we can go to create detailed viewport to generate the detailed viewport from that particular marker. So let's do that. And let's just go and create a brand new sheet layer. Uh, let's go for new sheet layer. Let's go for 0101. Let's just call this details. Again, <laughs> sorry about the spelling. Right click to check that. Let's click OK. And for this one, I think I'm going to blow this up to like a 1 to 20 to begin with. So let's see how that looks. So what you can see it's done is immediately kind of, let's turn the dims off, blown up the detail for me nicely. And it's got the uh, drawing label there. We can move that detail across. If we want to, we can actually crop it as well, which is quite nice. And if we double click on it, we get the option to navigate back to the design layer, the original design layer where the information is actually drawn. Or we can go into the annotations. So again, we can move our drawing label here if we would like to. Let's call this detail one in there. You'll see that the scale is automatically set by the viewport. So I can move that anywhere I like if I really want to there. What's nice is if I do want to, um, I can actually basically go back to my drawing before. Plan, let's double click back. And you can see it's basically referencing the sheet 101 and it's detail one. So let's do that same process again. So over here, if I did want to, I could actually rename this drawing here. Um, let's just call this detail two. And at the moment it's um, not linked. So let's go to create viewport. And let's go through to sheet one on one again. Let's make this one to 10, 20 scale. And let's just click OK, auto coordinate. And there we go. So you can see it's very, very nice and easy. And again, we've got the option to blow up and add a bit more information. Um, so no reason why you shouldn't double click into the annotations layer and actually kind of, let's just rename that detail two. Detail two. And again, let's move that there. And we can basically get maybe our dimensioning tools and perhaps put some kind of finer level of sort of detail dims into that viewport locally. The kind of stuff that you wouldn't want you know, in your design layer. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's carry on and have a look at another little bit of a workflow. So what I'm gonna now do is progress on to cutting a section, um, just using my new smart objects display, which I really like to show off. I think that's brilliant. So you can get a really good sort of understanding and view of the building from all positions. Good, so we could either do it with the old section viewport, um, but I'm actually gonna try a different workflow. So previously, if you watched my other videos, you will have seen I've kind of cut sections using uh, the clip cube. And that is actually a really nice method. Um, I do like this method a lot because you can, you know, basically dynamically adjust the section and sort of see where the best place to cut that section is. And you can create some really interesting viewports. However, I'm not gonna do it this way this time. I'm gonna go to the top plan and I'm gonna go to my section marker tool little tip for you here is to hold the B key down. That's nice because that gives me my X-ray fill capability. Um, so I can kind of see through the plan where I want to cut the section. And I think I'm going to go and cut it through the dormer window and that VLUX there. And I'm not going to cut it full width. I'm basically going to just drop it there. So you can see I've got the um, section itself. Let's now move that up to the roof layer just so it sort of sits up above. Um, I can basically fiddle around with the marker size quite a bit. Let's make those half as big. And what's really nice is we've now got styles available in all our markers. So if I do want to go to uh, replace, I can actually access a whole bunch of different marker styles. And these are just the standard vector ones, uh, vector ones at the moment. Um, but I could easily take these and tailor them to my own requirements. 
Um, so let's go for something a little bit different there. Click OK. Excellent. Now you can see we've got the um, broken chain link again. Of course, what that means is that we can actually create the section viewport dynamically by clicking in object information. Got a feeling you, you can actually right click and do it as well. Um, yeah, you can create section viewport from there, but let's, let's go for it from this command here. So we're going to go for a new sheet and let's call this uh, 102 and let's just call this section. Click OK. I think we'll go for 1 to 50 and I'm going to come back and look at any, other, any other options in a moment. So let's just let it process for a second and hopefully we'll see a nice section dropping onto our sheet in a second. Um, there's quite a lot of information in the model so section viewports can take a little while to generate um, but there it is and it looks pretty good already. Um, so we've got quite a bit of information in here. We do need to go into the annotations layer and select the drawing label and just do that there. Let's call that section there and again we can exit those annotations. Good. Now, one thing I have noticed is I've got my um, foundations layer turned off. So let's just pop down and update that. Substructure and footings. So now let's just repeat this process again of getting my kind of reference markers. And we'll go down to our smart marker and we'll do a detail call out. Um, if we want to, we can actually go in and sort of set the radiuses in here of all our tools. And we can actually choose the style as well. Um, let's go for a slightly different style this time. Let's just say, say we were actually kind of trying to kind of pull off a detail of this little section here. Let's move our marker and now we can actually click the create detailed viewport and go and create another drawing as well. So let's go and do that. Let's go and do 103 whoops 103 tab details and click OK. And you can see how fast this is in terms of a process generating um, use your 1 to 50 sections really as key drawings and then these can actually generate the detailed sections where you can actually blow these up into a higher level. Um, we've talked about how you can kind of crop them quite nicely and arrange them as you would like. So it's a really really nice workflow and uh, let's blow that up to 1 to 20 a bit more. A reasonable size I think and then in terms of sort of annotation <coughs> so in terms of annotation um, we can then move on to things like the call out tool uh, one of my favorite little tools and we can basically start to kind of use this to annotate if I've actually got a set of building ropes I can already use this um, and you can see there's not a, not a bad little note that I can actually use there so basically we can use these to annotate the drawing and uh, let's just call that hardcore down there and so on. Now what's good as I say is we can actually set up some hyperlinks. So if I set the back references to be basically the viewport defining this sheet, I'm going to show you how this works in a second. Okay, so let's just save what we've done so far. I'm actually going to go back to my section drawing and create one more viewport for the sheet. Um, let's pick off another detail. So we'll go to detail viewports and maybe we'll pick off like a ridge detail. So you can see how smooth this is. I'm just going to go to call this detail 2 and let's just go and rename this ridge potentially and we'll create viewport. So off we go to our detail sheet. This time we'll just jump to, let's go for 1 to one to 10. Let's try that, see how that works. And wait a second or two, and that will kind of generate that section onto the sheet for us, which is really nice. So instead of having to kind of redraw all these details, we can, to some extent, generate, you know, quite good details from the model itself. Um, generally, BIM modeling, you work at 1 to 50 level of detail, and then you add a bit more detail into the viewport. So a few other features on the smart markers I want to show you um, as well. So I'm just going to double click and pop into the annotations layer here. Um, basically, I just want to kind of select this annotation, move it across, and I was going to change the style. So all of the smart markers now have style added. And this means um, you can basically create your own office standards. And you can see there's a range of uh, 
styles that actually ship with the markers already. Um, let's just try this one, it's quite nice. And we'll click OK. So that applies that particular style. Um, if I did want to actually edit the graphics of that particular style, in fact, let's do one more and we'll, we'll come back and do that. I'm going to do something else as well while I'm here. I'm going to right click and just go in straight to edit the crop because I really wanted to just change that to a slightly smaller radius. And it was bugging me that it wasn't quite center. So the good thing is I can jump straight to the crop or if I want to edit this now, I right click and go to annotations um, without having to go in and out of the viewport. So otherwise you'd have to exit and then double click to go back into the crop. Let's do that same thing again. Let's pop into the annotations first. Let's go style replace. Choose the one that we've got here. That's cool. Let's go right click, edit the crop, straight in. Let's just change that to 250. Um, I think the position of it is okay, but if I wanted to, I could kind of reshape it a little bit taller maybe and crop it a bit tighter there and so on. Now what you're going to find is if I do pop back to my section sheet, of course those viewports, those annotations and those crops have been corrected in both drawings um, and also because of the drawing label here, I've actually got the uh, tag there effectively as well. But what do you think of the new smart markers? And I think they're really, really nice. And the really cool thing that I love about them is if I just go and edit the style, um, so I can actually kind of edit the style itself and all the different graphics and so on. All I need to do to edit the style is select the label, click edit style, that'll bring up the dialogue so I can do various things in here. But if I do want to edit the layout, I just click edit drawing layout. I'm into the graphics now. So for example, I don't know, let's say I wanted to just put a bit of colored fill or something. Let's just choose that whole thing as a light graphic. So you can see because I've edited the style, that will have globally edited all of the tags in every location. So it's very easy to actually have your own um, office standards. Good, okay, so onto another really cool feature. I'm gonna click onto this viewport here, and I want to show you this thing called Select Back References. Now what this does, it means that I can actually attach it to um, some referencing, a bit like a hyperlink. So I can basically say I would like to attach it to its defining viewport. And basically what that means is, let's see if this one's already attached. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So this is coming from the detailed viewport there. Okay, so let's go and generate a PDF of this particular drawing. Um, so it's not quite finished yet by any means, but if we go to file and we just publish these two drawings that we've created. So I'm gonna scroll down my, t my list here. I'm gonna find my drawings section 102 and three um, that I'm going to export. Let's export them over here. A couple of options for you. If you select them, um, you can export and print in DWG, you can do image files and everything as well. But if we do the PDFs, then we should get the hyperlinks working. If I go to options, in here I've got all sorts of control over the resolution and the quality of that PDF. I'll just go for a medium one. But you can see you, you can really can compress the PDFs quite small now. So that's fine. And finally, if you would like them as separate PDFs, you tick this one, or if you want them as a single document, just uh, don't tick this one. Let's go ahead and publish. I won't save a set of drawings, and let's just publish those to my desktop for now. And we'll click save, and we'll replace the one that's already there. Okay, so again, it can take a few moments because what it's actually doing is recutting the section from the design layer and actually creating those sections and also the detailed viewports from that section as well. So it shouldn't take too long. So now we've got the sections. Um, what's really nice about this is as you move around the drawing, you can see as soon as you kind of get onto uh, the label, it changes to a little um, finger, a hyperlink essentially. So when we click onto that, it basically just goes to the detail sheet. So it's really, really nice the way you can kind of link these together so what do you all think of the new smart markers? Um, do you think these are going to improve your workflow? I personally do, and I'm really excited to kind of really get stuck into them on my next few projects. Um, but it'd be really great to hear what you all think in the comments and look forward to your feedback. Anyway, thanks for watching the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.